So Beat Saber has finally come to the PlayStation VR 2, so of course I jumped straight in to check it out. So in today's video, I just wanted to chat about my impressions of Beat Saber on the PlayStation VR 2, my thoughts on the latest music pack, and whether you should buy a PlayStation VR 2 or not. Now Beat Saber confirmed a while back that Beat Saber was coming to the PlayStation VR 2, but there was no mention of it afterwards. But at the recent PlayStation Gaming Showcase, they announced that it was now available on the PlayStation VR 2, along with the Queen music pack which I was very excited about. I'm a massive Queen fan, so I was stoked. Now, initially, I thought Meta was gonna put their foot down and keep Beat Saber a Quest exclusive since they own the game, but fortunately, they did decide to release Beat Saber on the PSVR 2, which is great news for Beat Saber fans. So if you do already own Beat Saber on the PlayStation VR 1, they're letting you upgrade for free, which again, is really great news. So same with the music packs as well. You can upgrade them for free, and to redeem them, you just gotta go to the store, find the music packs, and it should let you redeem them. Otherwise, it's 20 $9.99 USD to buy Beat Saber on the PSVR 2 and $13.99 to buy the Queen Music Pack. Now I get asked this a lot, if you want to mod Beat Saber on the PlayStation VR 1 or 2, unfortunately you can't. You can only do that on the PC or Quest version. So if you play Beat Saber on the PlayStation, you're stuck playing the OST and Music Packs forever. Now jumping into the game for the very first time, I was a little bit disappointed with the graphics. I mean graphically, it looks alright. Like it looks the same as like the Quest, a bit better. Like the PlayStation VR 2 spec-wise is pretty decent. It has dual OLED panels with 4K display resolution, but I found the game looked very flat. I don't know if it's a hardware thing or a software thing, but I felt like the game was just lacking a lot of contrast and depth and just didn't have that wow factor that I was expecting. On other games I played on the PlayStation VR 2, I felt really blown away by the graphics. On Beat Saber, it just looked fine. Like, it's not necessarily a bad thing, just wasn't what I was expecting. Now, one of the features of the PlayStation VR 2 is that it has really great haptics. The headset has haptics along with the controllers, so I was expecting some cool haptics within the game. When navigating the menus in Beat Saber, the controller's haptics responded to when you hovered over anything, and it felt really nice. I think this is really good for new users as well, where they can kind of understand what they're pointing at. But when I jumped into some gameplay, there just wasn't really any haptics. Oh, this is weird. I thought they'd feel heavier. There's like a little bit of haptics. But the controllers are really light. It's uh... It's very different. I felt like the haptics had been really dialed back where it just kind of didn't feel responsive. With all VR versions of Beat Saber, you like to have some haptics so you know when you slice through something so you know you didn't miss it, but I felt like it was just kind of lacking that on the PSVR 2 version. And again, it's not a bad thing, it's just different. I definitely wanted some more feedback when slicing blocks because there were definitely times where I wasn't sure if I hit something or not. On the plus side though, the controllers feel really light and there's lots of room for wrist mobility, which is great for your faster songs and just having generally less stress on your wrist. The sabers point out at a pretty comfortable angle. They point out from the trigger button on the front of the controller. But I have heard there's a bug on some PlayStation versions where the saber's not aligned with the controller, but Beat Saber are aware of it and trying to fix it. But on the note of saber angle, I did notice in the settings that is no option to change your controller adjustments. So the angle where the saber is, is where it's gonna stay. Which again, is fine, but a lot of Beat Saber players like to adjust the angle of their saber to accommodate different grip styles. And this is a feature which is found in different versions of Beat Saber. So again, kinda odd that it's not available on the PSVR 2 version. Most other settings seem to be same as the Quest version. And I did jump into some multiplayer. Considering the game just came out and I live in Australia, I wasn't unsurprised to see an empty lobby. I did try out some fast songs on the PSVR 2, and to be honest, the tracking was pretty decent. I had no latency issues or issues where I completely lost tracking. I only lost tracking the normal situations where you move controllers too far behind you, but I was pleasantly surprised with how good the tracking was. The tracking might even be better than the quest tracking, but don't hold me to that. The only real issue I had after playing for a while was that the edge of the controller really started to hurt the tendons in my hand. The edge of the controller is quite sharp, and after gripping it for quite a while, it was kind of digging into my thumb and it felt really uncomfortable. I did try out some different grip styles, but couldn't really find anything that was suitable, but perhaps like some sort of grip or something might improve the comfort, but something for players to consider. All in all, I think I think Beat Saber on the PlayStation VR 2 is pretty good. I think a first time player or someone upgrading from the PlayStation VR 1 will really be happy with Beat Saber on the PlayStation VR 2. There were some letdowns like the graphics, but at the end of the day, you don't play Beat Saber for the graphics, you play it for the gameplay. 
And the haptics response was something I found odd rather than bad. And perhaps it's something that Beat Saber will tweak over time. Now the Queen music pack. Again, it was fine. The environment was nice, nothing too crazy. There's just a neon Freddy outline in the background with some lights along the runway, which kind of responded to the music. And they did a great job with lighting to emphasize moments within the songs. I played most of this pack on Expert Plus, and to be honest, at times it felt a little bit overmapped. It often bounced around from left to right often, which kind of felt laborsome at times. And I had to spend my time focusing on what the blocks were doing rather than just vibing with it. Like the mapping didn't feel super natural. And they definitely did some interesting mapping to songs with whatever this is. What the, the What was that? I still had a blast playing this music pack. Sadly, it's not my favorite music pack, but for the music alone, I think it's still worth getting. And on a ranking scale, I would say it's probably an A rank. Still fun, but not the best pack. So over the last few months, I've had a lot of people ask me if they should buy a PlayStation VR 2 or not. And to be honest, totally depends on your situation. The hardware on the PlayStation VR 2 is pretty great. I especially love the haptics in the controllers, and there's some really great exclusive titles like Horizon Zero Dawn, Gran Turismo 7, and Resident Evil Village. But from anyone coming from the Quest or PC VR headset, you're gonna find a lot of the games are already available. So you're kind of relying on those exclusive titles to make it worth the investment. I often found myself playing the exclusive titles in the PSVR 2, but not picking it up again because I already own the rest of the games on my Quest or PC and would generally prefer to play it on those platforms anyway, which of course is only a problem if you already own a VR headset. But for new users, I think you'll really love this headset and the game's library is pretty decent. Comfort is fine with the headset, but I do find the sweet spot is really hard to find. And by sweet spot, that's where you kind of adjust it to that exact spot where everything looks really clear. It's the type of headset where you really need to spend your time calibrating it and getting the adjustment quite right. And at times I found that a bit frustrating, but just something to consider. But if you're just someone who prefers a console experience or have kids who want to use the headset, the PSVR 2 is going to be great. But like most consoles, it's always going to be limited. There's a larger games library on the Quest and you have the ability to add a huge range of mods. And multiplayer wise, there may be a larger player base on Quest as well. And you can kind of just take the Quest anywhere. With the PSVR 2, you're kind of tied down to your living room. Spec-wise, the Quest isn't as good as the PSVR 2, but we may see some changes with some announcements coming up for a Quest 3 maybe, or even an Apple VR headset is rumored to be announced next month. So if you ask me what headset to buy, I'm probably always gonna tell you that the Quest is a better buy, but the PlayStation VR 2 is still a really great headset, especially if you just want that plug and play experience with some really high quality titles to play as well. If you wanna learn more about this rumored Apple VR headset, I just did a video summing up all the rumors here, and I'll see you in my next video.